You're listening to Creative Breakthrough, the podcast that provides you with the strategies to elevate your creative passion to the next level. I'm your host, creative hustler, and chicken wing lover, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. And yes, I have an unhealthy obsession with chicken wings. Now, get ready to flex your creative muscle and keep winning. Hey, welcome to the Creative Breakthrough. I am your host, Shireen Kassam, aka The Funny Brown Girl. Hey, it's my birthday week. So if you're thinking, what can I get Shireen for her birthday? Because she's so awesome and so cool. Well, I'm going to tell you what you can get me. If you're using an Apple device, a Mac, an iPhone, an iPad, leave me a review. I would love it if you just left me a five-star review and that would be the best birthday gift ever. If you're not using an Apple device or use, listening to this podcast on Apple, share it with someone. If you're using Spotify, YouTube, Google, share this podcast with someone. Let someone know how cool this podcast is and how great I am and I will accept that as a birthday gift as well. Okay, a couple quick announcements. Announcement number one, we are trending in New Zealand. That means we are now trending in over 20 countries, y'all. This is so exciting. And it's because of you all for sharing this podcast, letting other people know about it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so grateful for you all. Second announcement, I am going to be taking a break from this podcast. I'm going to be putting it on an indefinite hold. And I say indefinite because I don't have a return date in mind yet on when I want to come back with this podcast, but I will be coming back, that I can tell you. I just need to sit down and really think about where I see the future of this podcast going. What is the vision? What are the goals? I just need to reset. As I say a lot of times in these podcasts is when you're starting off on a creative endeavor or creative journey, you should have a long-term goal, right? You should have a vision. You should have an end goal. What are you trying to accomplish? Where? What is your dream outcome, right? And what are the short-term goals that will get you there? And I will share, I'm going to share with you what my goals were when I started this podcast. And I'm at a point now where I have achieved those goals. I have achieved what I hope to um, accomplish by putting out this podcast. And so now I need to step back again and say, okay, I've accomplished the goals that I started with. So what are the new goals going to be? And so I just need some time to sit back and think about what those new goals are going to be. Um, When I started this podcast, the vision of this podcast creative breakthrough was actually twofold. The first reason was I was on the radio. I actually was on two different shows and I had to leave the radio. I had to leave one of the radio shows because people were offended that I was Muslim and they wanted me to apologize for being Muslim and they wanted me to refrain from saying that I'm Muslim. And that bothered me because I, I am, that's my identity. I am Muslim and I, I, nobody, if you're, if you're Christian or Jewish, you don't have to hide that. Why is it any different for me? And so I left the radio and I said to myself that when I, sh- I wanted to make, I wanted a platform, I had stand up comedy, but I wanted an additional platform where somebody was not filtering my voice, where I was going to be genuinely me. I could say what I wanted to say and nobody was going to tell me what I could and could not say. And on top of that, nobody was ever going to ever ask me to apologize again for something that I said. And so that's why I really wanted to start a podcast because I wanted my own platform. How did I come about Creative Breakthrough? Well, when I started off as com- in com- comedy and then in acting and then in radio, I always was looking for a mentor. I think mentorship is super important and I have a lot of mentors in my in my career, but I couldn't find any mentors in the creative space, especially not women of color mentors, right? And so I wanted to start something where I was able to bring this mentorship alive in a sense, in a way that would reach the biggest audience because I could start a mentorship program and get a bunch of people to sign up to be mentors and a bunch of people to sign up to mentees, but there would just never be enough people. There would never be enough mentors, right? But this way, if I get the mentor on the podcast and then they share their goals and their strategies and their inspirations with on the podcast, and then that podcast can get shared across the world in 20 different countries. I mean, we're definitely in more than 20 countries. When I say we're trending in 20 countries, I mean, we're in the top 10 podcasts within <clears throat> within the arts or within careers in those countries. And so I started this podcast because I wanted to find mentors. I also selflessly really wanted to talk to the people that I have on this podcast because I admire them. And then I wanted to share those conversations with you all so that you could also take what they said and put it to work into your own creative journeys. And when I started this podcast, the last thing I did was, is I wrote out a list. 
I wrote down all the people that I admired and all the people that I would love to have on this podcast. And that list kept growing. And I kept going down the list and emailing people and emailing people. And I'm at a point where everyone has responded with a yes or a no. And so everyone that obviously has responded with a yes, you have heard on this podcast and everyone who said no missed out on this opportunity. There's just one person that I have not been able to get an answer from, and that is Michelle Obama. And so that is why I'm going, I'm saying that this break is indefinite. It is not an end all be all because I will be back with a conversation with Michelle Obama in the near future. And if you know Michelle Obama, drop her a hint or a little nudge that Shereen Kassam is trying to reach her because she wants her to be on this podcast because she would be an amazing guest on this podcast. So with that, I say farewell, but not for too long. I, um, I'll be back. I just need to, like I said, sit down, think about what are the goals for this podcast? Where do I envision this podcast going? And then really just focus on some of the other opportunities that are coming down the pipeline for me. With that said, though, if you have any ideas or thoughts on what you would like to see this podcast become or who you would like to hear on this podcast or even me talking about, let me know. I would love to hear from you. You can hit me up at hi at funnybrowngirl.com or you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok at Funny Brown Girl. So today I'm going to leave you with something really cool that I had the opportunity to do a couple months ago. At the end of December, there was a virtual event called Unstoppable. And the idea of Unstoppable was to have women on the on the event, speaking on the event, about how they've been unstoppable. How have they overcome failures? How have they overcome obstacles and challenges? And I was honored beyond words when they asked me to be the keynote speaker. And so I gave the keynote speech on how I've been unstoppable. And it was such a really interesting time to give such a speech because at the end of 2020, I mean, I don't know about you all, but I was run down between COVID and losing my job and not being able to perform comedy and losing people in my life. Life 2020 was a hard year. And I mean, I'm not saying 2021 has been any better, but it was just a very interesting time to give a speech on how to be unstoppable. And so when you listen to it, I tried to make it funny, but I also tried to make it very insightful. And so I really hope that you get just as much out of it as the woman who attended the event got out of what I said. I'll also say this, I am super grateful for all of you. I am super grateful for all of you who tune in week after week, or even if this is your first time tuning into this podcast, I have so much faith in each and every one of you. I don't know you, but I, just the, I, the fact that you are listening to this podcast tells me that you have what it takes to win, that you have what it takes to be successful. Because not a lot of people listen to podcasts or master classes or YouTube videos to learn, to educate, right? They're just busy watching TV or li living their own life thinking somebody's going to discover them. Somebody's going to find them. But you guys are putting in the work, the effort, the time. And because of that, I know you are going to make it. And so even though I am taking a break from this podcast, please stay in touch. Please let me know how you're doing. Please tell me about your wins. Please tell me about how this podcast may have inspired you or somebody on this podcast who may have inspired you. I would love to hear those because that fuels my passion as well, right? That gives me a sense of purpose too. And I think purpose is very important as we go through life is understanding why we do certain things and what is the purpose of doing those things. And so I would love to hear from you. But with that, I am going to play the keynote speech that I did on how I've been unstoppable. And with that, I, and with that, I leave you with my favorite words, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Can't hear you. I'm just playing. I know I can't hear you, but I thought we'd be remiss if we had an event and we didn't do the good morning. I can't hear you. Um, as as you've heard, I am Shireen Kassam, and I am honored and grateful to be here today. I am honored that Renee, Shauna, and Summer thought about me today when they put on this event. I want to give them a big congratulations. I mean, putting on an event like this in the middle of everything we're going through is just amazing and that speaks wonders to who these women are they're just amazing women to look up to and role models and i'm so blessed that i get to be part of this event today so thank you for having me so let's get started so i'm i am a i am a chicken wing lover i am a stand-up comedian i am a podcaster and according to summer i am unstoppable and so i'm here to tell you why i might be unstoppable so a lot of people ask me why the chicken wings? Why do you love chicken wings, Shireen? And it's funny because 
it started off with just posting silly pictures on Instagram of me eating chicken wings. And I had a, I was dating a guy who hated chicken wings. So it was just something we would fight about all the time. And people loved hearing about why we would fight about chicken wings. Cause it's, it's a silly thing for a couple to fight about, right? So I would post these pictures and all of a sudden chicken wings became part of my brand. And then I would do these interviews, media interviews, podcast interviews, and people would ask me why chicken wings and I actually had to stop and think about it. Why chicken wings? Why am I obsessed with chicken wings? And I just wanna make it clear, I don't have like an obsession where anybody needs to like plan an intervention. It's all good. I have it under control, but um, I, I, I could eat them every day. And so I started thinking about it. Why do I like chicken wings? And I realized chicken wings is what makes me unstoppable. Now, before you laugh, I'm gonna tell you why chicken wings makes me unstoppable, okay? So reason number one, Chicken wings reminds me of where I came from, my childhood. So why, how did I start eating chicken wings? When my parents moved to America, we didn't have a lot. We were actually pretty, um, I don't want to say poor, but we didn't come here with a lot. Uh, my parents immigrated here from Africa. And so when we got here, we lived in a hotel. My mom, my dad, my sister, and my twin sister. Yep, I have a twin sister. And um, part of a reason why I'm unstoppable too, because I've always got competition right there next to me being like, I got this, what did you do? So it's always been a competition in my family. But when we got here, we didn't have much. And my dad was always working. So I didn't get to see him a lot. But every Sunday, my dad would put us all in the car and he would take us to this local joint, chicken wing joint. And we would sit there as a family and we would eat chicken wings. And as I got older and as we grew up, my dad started doing better and we, got into, we were able to move out of the motel and move into a house. And then we moved into a bigger house and then a bigger house and all of a sudden, we didn't have to eat chicken wings anymore as a family meal. Like we could go and get a steak dinner or seafood or do something a little bit more fancy. But no matter what the occasion was, whether we had family in town or a birthday or something to celebrate, we always went back to this place to have chicken wings. It had become a ritual in our family. And it was, it was, it's one of those things where it's like we sit around this table and eat chicken wings and we remember where we came from. We remember how hard we've worked to get to where we were or where we are right now. And for me, that's huge because I know that one, I have a family that supports me. So if I mess up, they're always gonna be there for me. But two, it just reminds me of like where my parents started off and what they've done for me and what I wanna continue doing for my legacy as well. So the number one reason I love chicken wings is just because it reminds me of my family and where we came from. And it just grounds me into this humbleness of like where, we could, where I could be and where I am right now and where I want to be. So that's number one. Number two, chicken wings helps me step out of my comfort zone. Now, again, you're probably like, wait, how is a chicken wing helping you step outside of your comfort zone? Okay, so I have a problem with my weight. I've always had a problem with my weight. I'm one of those kids where when I was in fifth grade, my, my mom like signed me up for gym and got me a personal trainer because she was like, something is not right. Like, so every, every year it's the same conversation. Like I've tried every diet, I've done everything. And so if I want to eat chicken wings, I better work out. And so I work out a lot before I eat chicken wings. Like I'm, I'm talking about like a full two to three hours, like to eat one chicken wing. So if somebody says, let's try a new spot or let's try a new type of chicken wing, I'm like, Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to waste my calories on that. Mm, that's a good question. So, but chicken wings is one of those things. Like I've had them all over the world. Like no matter where I go, like if I'm performing in South Africa, I performed in Dubai, I performed in Saigon. People are always like, you like chicken wings. I got the perfect place to take you. Let's go try chicken wings. I've tried them all over the world. And so I've had to step out of my comfort zone and say, okay, I'm gonna try this type of wing or with this type of sauce or this type of creation. And some of them have been a little wild and a little out there, but it reminds me of how I got started in my career. So when I started comedy, I didn't know I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I had never even heard of stand-up comedy. I was in my mid twenties. This was, and I'm dating myself. This was before Netflix. This was before you could sit at home and watch stand-up specials on Netflix. This is when you actually had to like get dressed, put on clothes, go outside. And I was living in Boston. So it was very cold at the time. And I also might sound, might sound weird because I'm a comedian, but I don't really like people. Like I'm an introvert. I rather stay at home and watch TV than go outside and experience something. So I'm, I had this friend staying with me and she really wanted to go to a comedy show and I didn't know what it was. So I was like, no, I don't want to do it. Like I was so adamant. I was like, I'm not getting dressed and going to a comedy show. I don't even know what that is. I've never seen it. I've never experienced it. And she finally wore me down and we go to this comedy show, right? We pay $20, we sit down, we start watching the show and it's 10 men, 10 
guys come up on stage. It's a showcase. So 10 guys come up on stage and they each do their show. They each do their set, five, 10 minutes. And we go through them all and I am bored out of my mind. I'm just sitting there thinking like, what is going on here? Like, they're not, they're not funny. I, I don't find it relatable because they're all talking about things that I don't really understand. They're talking about their dogs and they're talking about their male parts and their relationship issues. And so after the show is over, I went up to the owner of the club and I said, excuse me, I would like my money back. <laughs> and he looked at me and he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I want my $20 back. And he said, he said, and, and I still remember him saying this, he said, it's not that easy to make people laugh. And here I am, I'm this mid twenties girl. I've never been told I was funny. I've never been the class clown. I'm a very serious put together person. I put on my suit every day and I go to work at a financial consulting firm. And I looked at him and I said, well, it can't be that hard to make somebody laugh with this like cocky, like attitude. And I've never even been cocky. Like, I don't even know where that came from. I just really wanted my $20 back. And he said, I tell you what, you go learn how to do stand-up comedy and then you come back here. And if you do a good job and you get somebody to laugh, I will give you back your $20. And so I was like, sure, how do I get started? And so that's how my journey into stand-up comedy started. And since then, I've learned the importance of saying yes to every opportunity that comes my way. So since I started comedy, I remember I started, um, I got a phone call one day and the guy was like, do you wanna do radio? And I was like, in my head, like, why does he want me to do radio? And I said, I just said, yeah, sure, I'll try it. Went in, did a radio set, and then I got a weekly show on the radio. That led to acting, that led to podcasting. And so what I'm saying is to be unstoppable, you have to take those chances. You have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone and say yes to everything, even as what, however silly it may sound. I mean, there's definitely things I say no to. Let's, let's be clear, there's definitely things, I don't say yes to everything, but I do think that in, in your life, you're not gonna learn, you're not gonna see new things, you're not gonna experience new things, you're not gonna find your passion unless you start saying yes. And yes is what's gonna get you to the top. So say yes to chicken wings all the time. Okay, the third reason I think chicken wings has made me unstoppable is you really can't mess up chicken wings. Like think about it, when was the last time? <laughs> 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 Yay, there's actually an audience out there. If you, I, <laughs> I'm like laughing at myself in my head. So I hope you guys are laughing too. <laughs> but you can't mess up a chicken wing. Like think about it. When was the last time you ordered chicken wings and they messed them up, right? Maybe they, maybe they gave you somebody else's order. Maybe they put the wrong sauce on them. But like you can fix that, right? If somebody gives you a plate of chicken wings in the wrong sauce, you send them back, they make you a new batch and they put a different sauce on it, right? It's not like a steak, like once it's burnt, it's burnt. And sometimes they're like, well, it, you asked for it to be medium, medium, and that's, that's our, your, this is medium. And you're like, no, that's medium well. And you can argue about it. You really don't argue about chicken wings. And that is how I live my life. Like I can't mess up my life. I can make mistakes, I can fail, but I can always get back up and resauce myself and start over again, right? Nothing is stopping me from restarting. Nothing is stopping me from getting back up. Nobody is going to dull my shine. Nobody's going to not let me resauce myself. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you another experience I had a couple years ago. I was at the I was at the peak of my comedy career. I was killing it. I was um I was on two radio shows and I was doing comedy. And we did the show in Florida, um, in Melbourne, Florida. I still remember this place. And they only had seats for 60 people, but I had brought out 150 people to this show. So they actually, we were delayed starting the show. They had to bring in all these extra seats for all these people from the radio who had come out to see me. And there was this one table in the front and it had a reserve sign on it. And I was like, oh man, somebody really wants to see me tonight because they reserved a table. Well, it turns out that that reserve table was the, actually the only table in the whole room that hadn't come out to see me. They had just booked tickets on a whim to come there. So the, the first comment goes on stage and this, this table is being rude, obnoxious. They're just like, they're just, they're just telling her like, get off stage, you're not pretty, you're not, you're not attractive enough, you're not funny. Then I get on stage and it gets even worse. And I've never had such a bad set in my life. Like I almost started to cry on stage, which as a comedian, one, I'm not supposed to cry. I'm supposed to make you laugh. But two, I've just never been in that situation before. And then I made the mistake. Well, not really, not really a mistake. I should have, I should have read the audience a little bit, but I told them that I was Muslim and I started doing my Muslim jokes. And three people at the table, there was 12 people, three of them got up. One of them said, get rid of her. And then they proceeded to walk out of the club and the rest of the table walked, got up and left as well. 
And now you would think that it would stop there, but it didn't. They actually then went to talk to the club owner and they complained that I was being aggressive and that I was being vulgar and that it was rude of me to tell them that I was Muslim. And then they went on social media and they started to rip up the club for letting a, a Muslim person perform at their club. And it escalated to a point where the radio, one of my radio shows said to me, you need to apologize to them for being Muslim or we're gonna have to remove you from the show. And I had to make a decision. And it was a really easy decision. I didn't even think about it. I was like, take me off the radio show. I'm done. I don't need to be here because I am not apologizing for being Muslim because that they were offended that I made that joke. I've made that joke on HBO. I've made that joke in front of Arsenio Hall, in front of Carlos Mencia. I'm not apologizing for being Muslim. And I lost the radio show. And a lot of people were like, you should have just apologized. You should have just pretended that you were apologizing. You should have just like made it seem like you cared what they thought because why should you lose your radio show that you've worked so hard to get, right? But that's not the way I thought about it. I was like, you know what? This is a perfect chance for me to pivot because on the radio, somebody else owns my voice. Somebody else gets to tell me what to say. Someone else is telling me how to act and how, what, what's my character. Now I get to go and do my own thing. And I started a podcast. Now I actually have two podcasts, but the first podcast is called Creative Breakthrough. And it is done amazing. Like since I left the radio and started that, I mean, that podcast is trending in 20 countries. I get, I've gotten media interviews from it. I've had amazing people email me and reach out to me to ask me to be on the podcast. So like I've had Maz Jabrani, um, the comedian. I have Ali Velshi from MSNBC. I mean, I, it's just, it's amazing what you can do when you pivot and you believe in yourself and you get to, I get to share my own voice with people. I'm not, I'm not being told who I can, who I can talk to and who, what I can say. And I, and I don't have to apologize for being who I am. So the third reason I love chicken wings is you can't mess, you can't mess up. You can fail and you can fall down, but that doesn't mean life is over. You can just get back up and resauce yourself. Okay. Number four. The fourth reason I love chicken wings. Now this one might offend some of you guys, but I only eat flats, flats only. And I got into an argument with somebody because some people take this very seriously, flats or drums. And the guy was like, drums are so much easier to eat. Like you can take the whole drumstick and put it in your mouth, you whip it out and you're done and it's easy. And I was like, and that is the problem. And that is why you are not unstoppable because you're looking for the easy way out. And then he started arguing, Flats are difficult to eat because there's two bones and you somehow got to get to the meat in the middle and you've got to like break it apart and it's messy and it takes too much time and it's, it's difficult. And like, why would you want to eat something with two bones instead of one bone? And I just was like, stop it. This is exactly why I, you can be unstoppable because you want to take that extra step. You are okay with the flat chicken wing. You're okay with something more intricate, something more complex, something a little bit difficult. Sure, there's an extra obstacle. There's an extra bone to get around, but you are willing to take that step. And that is me. I will only eat flats. I have converted everybody in my social circle, my family, everybody into eating only flats because it is one, it's the best type of chicken wing. Like the, the meat is just more tender and there's more meat on there. And it's just, it's just a better, there's less cartilage and everything about it is better but I just think that it really relates to being unstoppable like are you willing to take that extra step are you willing to do more work are you willing to to deal with that extra like hurdle or challenge to get to the top and I'm going to give you another example so I had this really good friend who wanted to be a screenwriter and he had written he'd written a, a 60 minute um hour or an hour show and I read it and I thought it was great but I didn't know anything about writing screenplays or reading screenplays and then I decided for selfish reasons, I wanted to write a TV pilot. And I say selfish reasons because there is a TV show called Insecure and it stars Issa Rae, it's on HBO. And I wanted to meet Issa Rae because she is my idol. She was like, she's just everything I, I aspire to be, right? And so she was having a TV writing competition. And if you won the TV writing competition, you got a chance to work with Issa Rae. So I was like, I'm gonna write a TV pilot. So I went to my friend and I said, I wanna write a TV pilot, how do I do it? thinking because he'd written a screenplay, he would know. And he was like, oh, you just write it. And I was like, what do you mean you just write it? And he's like, just write it. Like, he's just like, I just wrote it. And I was like, but what about the science behind it? What about the structure? What about the storyline? What about the arcs? And he was like, oh, you, that'll all come to you. Like you watch TV, you know what to do. So rewind, I don't, that's not, I, I'm a, I'm an, I'm an, intel, an intellectual. I love, I love to learn, I love to study. So I was like, that's not gonna work for me. So. I had six weeks to write a TV pilot. I signed up for a class. I bought some books. I found a mentor. 
And in six weeks, I wrote a TV pilot and it ended up being a semi-finalist in Issa Rae's competition. So I didn't get to meet Issa Rae through this project, but I did meet her through a different avenue because I don't give up. And my friend said, my friend was actually really upset. Instead of saying, wow, that's so awesome that you became a semi-finalist, he was disappointed. He was sad. He was angry. He was like, how did you get to be a semi-finalist? How did you get to get to that point? And I've been writing a screenplay for over a year now and nobody has, I don't have anything to show for it. And I just stopped and I was like, but who has seen your screenplay? Have you shown it to anyone? Have you, have you formatted it and written it in a right way where you can show it to people? Have you submitted it to competitions? Have you done the work behind it? And, and his mentality was, if I write it, they will come. If I have something, people will know about it. But nobody's gonna know about what you're doing unless you tell the world about what you're doing. And so you have to put yourself out there. You have to go out there and say like, this is what I have to give you and then go and give it. And that's where I think it comes into play a flat versus a drum. A drumstick, you want the easy way. You wanna just be done with it. The flat is gonna go out there and try to figure it out. They're gonna try to figure out how to get it into the right hands, how to be seen, how to be noticed, how to keep moving until they get what they want. Like I said, I didn't get to meet Issa Rae because I didn't win that competition, but you better be darn sure two months later, I met Issa Rae because I applied to another competition and there she was. And I was like, hey, I applied to your first competition and I didn't win, but hey, I'm still here, you know? so. You've just got to keep trying and you just got to keep moving forward. You just got to keep going through those obstacles and not ever think that you should get the easy way. And because it, one, the minute you have that mentality about, I want it, to, I, it just should be easy. That's just when you're just not going to make it to the top. Okay. The fourth reason, I think I'm at four, no, five. Yeah, five. The fifth reason that I love chicken wings is they allow me to be myself. Like chicken wings, allows me to be myself just in, in every in every aspect. So a lot of people will look at my Instagram feed and be like, ew, chicken wings, that's so mediocre. Why would you eat chicken wings? It's so unhealthy for you. Don't you, don't you think your body is a temple and deserves to be eating something better? And then some people will be like, um, when they watch me eat chicken wings, they'll be like, you're so aggressive when you eat your chicken wings. It's so unattractive. Listen, this is me. Okay, this is my time to do me. I don't, it's not up to you to tell me how I should be eating my food or what I should be eating. Okay, it's my body and this is how I'm going to do me. And I think that is like the biggest, 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 biggest advice I could give anyone in being unstoppable is you have to be you, you have to be genuine, you have to be real, you have to tell your story. And a lot of us, I think, tell ourselves that we are being real, we are telling our story, we are being genuine. But I really want you to look around you and see who are the people closest to you and what parts of you might you not be shining because you are afraid of what they may think about you or, or what you're not shining because you're afraid of what they may be thinking about you. And I say that because Sometimes we're surrounded by people who are toxic, right? We are, we're surrounded by people that we think love us and want to see the best for us, but really they're really jealous of you and insecure about it. And so they're not your biggest cheerleaders. Take, for example, the guy who was writing a screenplay with me. Our relationship fell apart after that because he couldn't be happy for me, but I thought he was my best friend. But some people are also just not going to be supportive of you because they want to protect you. So take in, case in point, my parents. My parents, I didn't tell my parents I was doing stand-up comedy for almost a year. And the only reason, and, and for that whole year that I was doing stand-up, I didn't even use my real name. I was going by Funny Brown Girl because I didn't want anybody to know because I was so nervous what the reaction would be, right? And it was really negative. So I thank God I didn't say anything. But I did myself a disservice because I wasn't being my true self. I wasn't putting myself out there as Shireen Kassam, the funny brown girl. I wasn't telling the world, here I am, I'm ready. I was still hiding behind something. And one of the things I was hiding behind were my parents because all my life I had done what my parents had asked of me, right? My parents said, go to college. Well, they did act, they said, go to, go to an Ivy League school and be pre-med and study computer science. And so I was like, yes, mommy and daddy. And I went off to an Ivy League school and I studied pre-med and computer science and I failed it. And so then I had to restart and become, do economics, but that's a whole different story. So then they were like, now you need to go and get a great job, go into investment banking, move to New York. So I did that. Then they were like, you have to go get a master's degree get your MBA. So I went and did that. And all my life, I kind of was just a people pleaser. I did everything my parents asked of me because I had seen what they had given me and I didn't want to disappoint them. But when I discovered stand-up comedy, everything shifted in my life. I realized I wasn't being true to myself. 
granted, no one ever told me I was funny and I still didn't want to be around people. So I still didn't understand how I could be an extrovert and still be unstoppable, but it was possible. You can do it. And I started saying yes to things. And I started to show my true colors. I started to speak my mind. I started to develop a voice. And once you find your voice, ladies, oh my God, the world changes. People look at you different. You actually start, you start feeling different inside of you once you start to vocalize your voice. And it has just been such an amazing journey to see where I was in my mid twenties to where I am today. And so I say to you, it's super important to do an audit of your life, figure out what's holding you back. I'm going to give you one, one more quick story because this just happened actually a couple of weeks ago. I started making TikTok videos a couple of weeks ago and I know I'm super late to the game because I didn't have Kenya in my life, your next speaker, to tell me that it was super important to get on TikTok much sooner. So I get on TikTok, right? I put out a video. I put it on my Instagram. It does amazingly well, I think, for, for, my, for my standards. It does really well. And everybody loves it. And I'm like, yay, I made a TikTok and it's doing well. So then I go and make a second TikTok, right? And I put it up on TikTok and I put it up on Instagram. And then somebody comments to me. Now, the TikTok, let me set the states. The TikTok's only 40 seconds long, right? It's a very short clip. And somebody really, really close to me, somebody I would consider my best friend, if not the, my, my only friend, wrote me six reasons why the clip was not funny. And I was, I was hurt, I was heartbroken. I was like, why would you say that to me? Why would you give me that feedback? Why, why are you being so critical with me? It's only 40 seconds and you have six pieces of feedback, like really? And, and, I, and then I was like, maybe I shouldn't post anymore because as a creative, I'm probably my worst creative critic, right? I'm, I, I overthink everything. I'm, I'm like, is it funny? Is it not funny? And now I'm really starting to judge myself. I'm really starting to think, am I funny? Am I not funny? And then I watched the numbers on that video climb and climb and climb and it surpassed the first video. And I was like, what is this woman talking about, right? And so because of her feedback, I may have stopped making TikTok videos but, and I did for like two days. And then I was like, no, I'm gonna keep making TikTok videos. And since then I've put out maybe four or five more. And yesterday a company called me and they wanna sponsor me to make TikTok videos for them. So if I had stopped because of this person, I wouldn't be where I am today or where I was yesterday when this company called me and wanted to sponsor me. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes the people closest to you really take a look at them. Sometimes they have, they, they, they really want the best for you, they do, but they don't know how to convey it or maybe they ha they're projecting on you something that's going on in their life. But because of that projecting, maybe you're not being your real self. So the number five reason to eat chicken wings is because it's real, it's you, it's be you, do you, okay? Like that's, that's the biggest advice I can give you. So what I'm gonna end with this, uh, wrap this up is I wanna give you five actionable tips that you can take home today and start being unstoppable. Number one, what we just talked about, do an audit of your life, figure out who's on your side, who's rooting for you, who wants you to win and keep those people close to you. And then the ones that are not rooting for you and maybe you might think are being insecure or jealous or trying to protect you from something, set boundaries with them, talk to them, explain to them what, what, what's happening, what is this that's going on. And, and, if, and if they don't wanna listen to you or you don't wanna have that talk, then it's just setting boundaries. Like with me, I know never to take advice from that person again about my TikTok videos. Like, we're done. We, I, I know not to listen to it. Psh, out. Number two, write down your dreams. I think writing down your dreams is the first big step to knowing what you want to do. Because when it's all in your head, you're like, man, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But once you write it down, now you're accountable for it. But I don't want you just to write down your dreams. I want you to write down a step-by-step -step how you're going to get to your dream. Because it's so much easier to accomplish a dream in steps than it is to try to th think of the whole thing and how you're going to accomplish it. So when I started my podcast, it wasn't about, oh my God, I'm going to be this big podcaster and I'm going to have all these like, contracts with people. No, it was, let's start with what, who do I want to have on the show? Who's my audience? What am I trying to, what impact am I trying to make on the world? And kind of just go step by step and try to figure out how am I going to be the best podcaster in the world? Three, and we talked about this earlier, say yes to new things. Always say yes, again, within boundaries, be safe. Um, and legal, but say yes to new things, try new foods, go on, try new experiences, try new things, because you never know what's going to impact you. Number four, don't be afraid to fail. I've, I've failed so many times, and I get this question a lot in interviews. People will be like, tell me about your biggest failure. And you know what I say? I'm like, I have failed so many times. I can't tell you about my biggest failure because what happens is I fail, I learn from it and I keep on going. You are not gonna shine. You're not gonna dull my shine by making me relive a failure. I already learned from it and I've moved on. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Just 
just learn from it and just resource yourself. And number five, eat more wings, flats only. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Renee. Thank you, ladies. Um, this is an amazing event. Again, thank you so much for having me today. I'm, I'm blessed, I'm honored. And reach out to me. You can find me at funnybrowngirl.com or funnybrowngirl everywhere if you have any questions or if I can help you in any way reach your dreams or suggest a chicken wing joint in your area. So with that, thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Stay connected about upcoming resources, including opportunities, festivals, competitions, and grants to help you grow your creative passion by subscribing to my bi-monthly newsletter by visiting funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. Don't miss out on a life-changing opportunity and subscribe today at funnybrowngirl.com forward slash subscribe. And hey, if you decide to go on Instagram today, follow me. I'm Funny Brown Girl. I'm Shereen Kassam, and you've been listening to Creative Breakthrough. Now, go flex your creative muscle and keep winning.